So my name is Mahab Del Mohsen, and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Computing and Mathematical Sciences at the University of Greenwich. I'll be presenting my research topic, which is virtual social robot interaction for enhancing the social skills of a children with ASD. Firstly, I will explain what my topic is about, explaining my contribution, and I'll then what explaining what is autism and its deficits. After that, I will give a brief about assistive technology and its use in enhancing the social skills of children with autism spectrum disorder. After that, I will give uh, an explanation about my tool uh, and show you some of my initial results. And lastly, I will conclude. Uh, social skills are the skill that humans use to communicate with each other verbally and non-verbally. The deficit of social skills of a children with autism spectrum disorder. Children with ASD who haven't received social skill intervention on an early age can show signs of regression to the extent of becoming non-verbal. Therefore, early intervention is essential for children with ASD. Although robot assistance intervention have proven to be beneficial in training the social skills of a children with ASD is limited. Therefore, this research aimed at developing a tool that is cheap, widely accessible, and provides social skill training program, which is a replication of a successful work that has been done using physical robots. The developed tool is a desktop virtual reality that employs a virtual robot to interact with the child. So the contribution of my PhD is uh, I have combined two assistive technology, virtual reality and robots, with social skill training program as a novel approach to enhance the social skills of children with high functioning autism. The second contribution to my PhD is I have developed an open source tool that can be really accessible and can be easily used by parents and teachers to practice enhance the social skills of children with high-functioning autism. Autism, is a, autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that appears at an early age and affects the child development. According to the DCD, uh, CD, CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, one in 54 children has been identified with ASD. ASD is more than four times common among boys than among girls. Each child with ASD may have different characteristics or different combination of characteristics. However, some deficits are commonly observed in them. These deficits are repetitive behaviors such as rapidly flapping their hands, repeating phrases or sounds, impairments of verbal behaviors such as little or delay language skill. Impairments of nonverbal behavior such as eye contact, gestures, and facial expressions. These impairments are contributing factors in the deficit of social skills, which is a core symptom of children with ASD. Social skills training programs are one of the widely used approaches for training and teaching the social skills of children with ASD. The aim of SST programs is teaching the children with ASD the necessary skills to communicate more effectively with others. SST sessions are facilitated by therapists or specialists. Some protocols that teachers and therapists use are peer mentoring, social skill group, video modeling, social stories, picture exchange, a communication system, applied behavior analysis, and finally, occupational therapy. Although social skills training programs are effective, they are not available for all children with ASD due to the high cost and the lack of the trained therapists. In this capacity, wide range of studies have investigated the potential of assistive technology in enhancing and training the social skills of children with ASD. Assistive technologies or adaptive and assistive devices that are used to improve functional capabilities of people with disability and elderly, elderly people. Children with ASD cope well with rule-based and predictable systems. So assistive technology became a promising solution 
for training children with ASD. Assistive technology has been implemented in virtual environments and robots to enhance the social skills of children with ASD. So virtual environments are computer-generated environment that makes the youth feel they are part of a virtual reality application classified into two types, immersive VR, in which user the user is completely surrounded by the virtual environment via head-mounted displays or projection system. And the non-immersive or the desktop VR is a type of VR that uses computer monitors or TV as displays, such as video games. In recent year, vid virtual environment and virtual characters became and rehabilitation of a children with ASD. Children with ASD feel more comfortable around robots than humans. So social robots have proven to be beneficial for this group because they offer consistent interaction, they are predictable, and these precisely the sort of interaction that children with ASD prefer. Wide range of studies have been conducted to evaluate the effectiveness of robot-assisted interventions in enhancing the social skills of children with ASD. These conducted a study employed different humanoid robots with different characteristics. As you see here, we have QT robots, we have now an Venu. Although the promising results of employing virtual environment in training children with ASD, the generalization of the acquired skills in such environment to the real world remain an open question. Most of these studies don't conduct follow-up sessions to assess whether children transfer the target skills learned in the training session to the, their daily life. And the high cost of immersive VR, its heaviness, discomfort, and the lack of general availability are potentially a widespread of these interventions. So desktop or the non-immersive VR interventions are preferred over the immersive VR. Despite that children with ASD are more responsive to feedback given by social robots than by a human, the accessibility of robot intervention is limited because it's difficult for many families to access due to the high cost and its efficient use required being monitored by a technician or by a professional. And one of the main criticisms in VR and social robots interventions has been the lack of involvement uh, from teachers and parents in the intervention sessions. Additionally, a limited number of studies took place in real life settings, such as the child home or school. So the idea of my PhD as developing a tool that employs a virtual robot to interact with the child, it's social skill training program, and to ensure the transition into being parent or teacher, not a researcher managed tool. The developed environment is a desktop virtual reality, which employs a virtual robot that interacts with the child. The developed environment has been uh, developed using Unity 3D game engine, and the developed tool has been uh, developed in two languages, English and Arabic, as the evaluation process is conducting between the UK and Egypt. So the developed training program targets three social skills, imitation, emotion recognition, and intransitive gesture. For the imitation skill, are an important element in the child social learning process to develop a new behavior or a new skill child need to mimic. Improvement in the imitation skills of children with ASD is connected to the improvement of their play skill. At the beginning, the imitation skills will be at the beginning of each session. The session starts by the virtual robot greeting the child, then introducing a game by saying, now we are going to play an imitation game. I'm going to do something do the same, so let's start. And there will be a hand gesture button uh, that the moderator will press to instruct the robot to animate a hand gesture. The robot will animate a nine hand gesture one after a time in a randomized order, and the moderator will judge the child's action. And for the emotion recognition skill, 
Emotion recognition skill is an important contributor in social and communication. Children with ASD characterized by deficits in their emotion recognition skills, improving the, this, this ability of a children with ASD is extremely crucial for their development. The emotion recognition training program consists of three phases. Each phase consists of a pre-test, four training sessions with two sessions per week, an immediate post-test and a follow-up post-test after two weeks. As the virtual robot doesn't have any facial expressions, it has been programmed to express emotions using body language, um, change color of the face and eye shape. Now I'm going to explain the emotion recognition training program protocol. Phase one aims for recognizing the basic six emotions, which is happy, sad, fear, angry, surprise, and disgust. In the pre-test, the virtual robot greets the child, gives the instructions for the pre-test. The purpose of that pre-test is to examine whether the child is able to recognize the emotions produced by the robot through body movement, change color of the face, and change eye shape. The moderator will, bless, will, will press the play button to instruct the robot to express one, one of the six emotions, one at a time, in a randomized order, and asking what is the name of this emotion. The child should choose one of the three options that appear in a separate buttons on the screen. The robot will provide a real-time feedback regarding the child answer, and there will be a score that counted the child correct answers, the test will be completed after the six emotions has been covered. Then the child will proceed to the training. In the training session, the child watches the robot express the six emotions one at a time in a randomized order while explaining the name of the emotion and when we feel it. Each emotion has been associated with a cartoon character to grab the child's attention and to help the learning process. Immediately after completing the four training session, the child will take the post-test, which is identical to the pre-test, and two weeks after the training, the child will take the follow-up post-test. The score that obtained in the pre-test and the post-test will be compared to see the improvement that happened through, um, after receiving the training. Phase two aims for expressing emotion, emotion through imitation. In the pre-test, the robot asks the child to express an emotion by saying, for example, what is the expression for happy? The word happy will appear on a puppet on the screen and the moderator will judge the accuracy of the child's emotion and either press correct or incorrect button. And there will also be a score for counting the child's correct answer. Then the child will proceed to the training session where the virtual robot expresses the six emotions one at a time. And each time the child asks to imitate that express the emotion. And immediately after finishing the training, the child will proceed to the post-test, which is again identical to the pre-test. And also the scores will be compared to see the improvement. Finally, in phase three, Phase three aims for recognizing emotion from a social context. The child will be asked to recognize and express emotion in social context. The robot will narrate a story where it's the main character and asks the child about the appropriate emotion for that story by saying, how should I feel? Three choices will appear on a separate button on the screen and the child has to choose the appropriate emotion. Then the child will proceed to the training session where the robot narrates the same stories as the pre-test and saying the appropriate emotion and demonstrating that right emotion. Different environments have, have been designed, taken into account the plot of the story. Each time the child will be asked to imitate the expressed emotion. And finally, the post-test is exactly the same as the that for that post that there will be a different stories. And going back to that one, uh, the intransitive gesture skill. So gestures are prerequisite for the development of languages and also an early indication of the communication skill. The intransitive gesture training program is exactly the same as the emotion recognition training program in which phase one 
target gesture recognition, phase two targets gesture recognition and production through imitation, and phase three targets uh, recognize and produce gesture in a social context. And now I will share my screen to show you a video of my tool and showing some of the scenarios. So if you just can tell me if if it shows or not. We can see it. Okay, so I'm gonna play it. So that's the tool. So you can check whatever uh, skill you like. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now we are going to play an emotion recognition game. Sorry for that. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now, we are going to play an emotion recognition game. I am going to express an emotion, and you are going to tell the name of this emotion. Let's go. What is the name of this emotion? Very good. What is the name of this emotion? Let's try another one. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now, we are working on emotions. The name of the emotion will appear here, and the picture for this emotion is here. Let's start. Look at this one. This is a disgust face. When we see something nasty, we feel disgust, like this. Green is the color for disgust. Look at this one. This is a fear face. When something scares us, we feel fear, like this. Purple is the color for fear. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now, we are going to play an emotion expression game. I am going to tell the name of the emotion, and you are going to express this emotion. The name of the emotion will appear here. Let's start. What is the expression for fear? Very good. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now, I am going to tell you a story. Then I will tell you which emotion I felt. Then, will you express this emotion? Let's go. My birthday was yesterday. My parents gave me a present. I felt happy. Now, it's your turn. What is the expression for happy? Very good. When I was sleeping, I heard something moving in my closet. I felt fear. Now it's your turn. What is the expression for fear? Fear. Hello, my name is Jamo Robot. Now, we are going to play a gesture recognition game. I am going to perform a gesture, and you are going to tell the name of this gesture. Let's go. What is the meaning of this gesture? Let's try another one. What is the meaning of this gesture? Very good. Um, 
I'm not sure. Can you show the presentation right now? Yes, I can see the presentation. Okay, great. Um, so now uh, I'm going to explain the experimental setup. Uh, the experimental setup is divided into two settings, which is on-site and online. Uh, due to the current situation and the lockdowns, uh, an online version of my tool has been developed and launched on a website to be available for wider group. So parents can use it with their children at home. And down there, that's the link for my website. And I'll be sure to drop it on the chat when I finish. Uh, and that picture is for the layout of the on-site setup. Each participant experiences the tool individually. And the teacher rule is controlling the tool by choosing the values and assess the child throughout the session. If asked for her, and I am the observer on the on-site session. The session of the call is the length of the intervention is for approximately three months. The protocol consists of 24 sessions. The child is receiving two sessions per week. Each session lasts for approximately 20 minutes, but it sometimes depends on the child progress and the attention. And for the participants at the beginning uh, for the preliminary evaluation, uh, eight typically developmental children with ASD, aged without ASD, aged between six and 12 years, were asked to identify the meaning of the gestures just to make sure that the gestures used by the virtual robot could be recognized by the participants with ASD. The findings show that the animated gestures performed by the virtual robot are recognizable and have common interpretation with consistency rate 75 or above. And right now, 15 children with ASD are participating in the study. I have 10 boys and 5 girls, and the evaluation process is still ongoing. And here are some of the initial results that I have received. Here is... Um, a comparison between the score that obtained from the emotion recognition phase one, that's the pre-test, and that's for the, po the first post-test, and these for the second post-test, which, which wo was after two weeks. As you can see, there is a huge improvement in the, in the score that obtains between the pre-test and the post-test. And also, here is the comparison for emotion recognition training program, but in phase two, that's the pre-test, first post-test, and the second post-test that was after two weeks. And that's the rate of recognizing the basic sex emotion expressed by the robot. As a result of phase one of the emotion recognition training program, it was hard for the participants to recognize between surprise and disgust without facial expression, so the facial expression is really important to distinguish or recognize surprise and discussed face. So, and for conclusion, uh, the tool has been developed to be easily used by parents and teachers to practice the scenarios uh, that aim to enhance the social skills of children with high-functioning autism. And the tool has been developed in English and Arabic language. The Design Social Skill Training Program is a replication of a successful work that has been used by the state of the art. And the evaluation process is still ongoing, so it's too early to make an analysis or any statements regarding the, the generalization of the acquired skills at the A stage, but pretty sure for the future or the further experimentation will indicate if generalized or not but for in results there is improvement in the skills of the participants um, and that's it thank you so much for listening that was an incredible uh, presentation thank you uh, we have one question do young children understand the words emotion or expression or gesture recognition? 
Uh, yeah, actually they can. Uh, first, um, if we're going to speak about the English version of my tool, yeah, they could re understand what's emotion and expressions. Uh, if we came to the Arabic version of my tool, it's uh, I have two versions of the Arabic language as the Arabic language is quite different than the Egyptian language. So the tool has been developed in an Arabic language and Egyptian language, and both of them has kind of different expressions. Uh, I found it much, much easier for the Egyptian students to use the Egyptian version rather than the Arabic version. Uh, I hope that's answer your question. Uh, I think there is another question. This... So yes, uh, autistic children find it difficult to transfer their learning from one environment to another. So in this case, they learn emotions in this game in, in environment. Do you think they would be able to apply this learning in real life? Maybe the test should be in real life incidents acted out rather than within a game. Exactly. Uh, that's why after we finished the whole training program, there is a questionnaire that the parents has to fill, uh, asking them if they have shown any emotion recognition or or any improvement in the learned skill that the children learn in the game and transfer it to the real life or not. And actually, um, after completing phase one, I have received the feedback from one of the parents that has already shown an emotion recognition improvement for her child. So as I said in the presentation, it's quite early to indicate that the generalization will for sure happen but I'm sure that after finalizing the whole protocol and taking the post questionnaire that I can answer that question clearly. Yes, to above the answer is no. The things that regarding to the colors and the emotions, um, I'm following the established, um, as, I, as I'm saying that I'm following the established training program where the, the, the physical robots has, has used these colors to express such emotions. And it has been agreed on for, from psychological perspective that the red is for angry, sad is for, um, blue is for sad, happy, is yellow and green is uh, discussed. And the only argument was was the purple, which is for fear, and for the pink, which is for surprise. But it has been agreed on the, we can use the light colors for the positive emotions and the dark color for negative emotions. Okay, thank you. That's uh, thank you for us answering the questions. That was wonderful, uh, and thank you to both of our uh, lovely speakers. Two very uh, rather different talks on the same sort of subject, uh, video games. Uh, it's really great that you two uh, uh, talk to us. Thank you.